Hi, this, uh, this demonstration video is to help you all out with uh, uh, doing the calculations uh, required for the uh, half-life of a coin lab. Now, going through the lab, remember you were supposed to take 100 coins and you were supposed to put them in a, can, uh, a cup, shake them up, flip them over, then separate out the heads from the tails, recording each time how many heads you had, and then uh, keeping just the heads, shaking those, and keep on doing that, removing the tails each time until you have no more heads remaining. And you were supposed to time in seconds how long that, uh, uh, that it took from the first flip until um, the last flip when you got no heads. Now, First of all, let's, for sample data, just so you know how to uh, do it, let's say the totally elapsed time of your lab was, I don't know, eight minutes and 13 seconds. In order to, first of all, change that into seconds, you take the minutes, eight, and you multiply by 60, because that's how many seconds there are, all right? And then I said it was eight minutes, 13 seconds, you then just add the 13, so plus 13. And I get 493 seconds being the total elapsed time. And then you were supposed to go through and you were counting each time that you flipped the coins, how many heads that you ended up with. So I'm just gonna put in some hypothetical uh, possible data, um, that um, that it might be, okay? And let's see, we do this, and we do this, and boom, boom, and then boom, and then let's say one and then zero, okay? So again, you do not have to fill out the entire table uh, if you uh, just fill up as much as you need until you end up with zero. So let's say these were the numbers that you had, starting off with 100 coins, and ending up with zero. Now, coming down here, it says calculate the length of each half-life in seconds, dividing the total lapse time of the number of half-lives or trials. Well, remember the trial number represents the number of half-lives. So our number that we got down to zero was nine. So we want to know um, how many seconds it is per half-life. So we take the 493 and divide by nine in this case. So I go 493 divided by nine, making sure that I show my work. 493 um, divided by nine, and that's going to equal, uh, let's go 54.78 um, seconds. And that represents how long each individual half-life was. Now, in this simulation, each second of real time will be represented, uh, will represent 100 years of geologic time. So how long in geologic time, again, hypothetically, uh, does each half-life represent? Well, if this is the half-life in seconds, we just simply take that, multiply by 100. So 54.78 times 100, and that's gonna give us 5,478 years. Now, next we need to do the graphs. And this is where it gets a little bit tricky, but I think you guys can handle it. Next, it says use Google Sheets to make a line chart of your data. To do this, first open a blank document sheet. All right. So I'm going to go up here and go to File, well, New. And then I open up here and I have Start. It's going to open up a blank one. Okay. So here we go. And then it says, Copy and paste your entire data table, including the column titles, onto the Sheets document. Then highlight your data table in Sheets, uh, including column tiles. Click on Insert, then Chart, and copy and paste your chart in the blank below. Be sure to paste it unlinked. So what that means is, I'm going to go up here, and I'm going to highlight my data table all the way down. Don't need to go below zero, all right? So I'm, then I'm going to copy that, go to my new one here and go paste. All right, so there it is. 
Notice I've included the titles of the columns. And the numbers are just numbers at this point. That's what you need. I'm then going to highlight it again, just, just the columns and the cells that actually have data. I'm going to go up here to Insert, click on Insert, and then click on Chart. And voila, I have number of coins flipped versus trial number. It's a line chart. It's exactly what I need. So then I'm going to copy this and then come over here and paste it right here. Boom. And when it says link the spreadsheet, I'm going to say no. I just want to paste it unlinked. So I paste it and there's my first data or uh, chart. Okay. We see you have a nice smooth curve going down. <laughs> then it says, this is where it gets a little tricky. All right, four and five are hard. Uh, use the same sheets document to create a second line graph. Copy and paste the data table from number three above uh, to another part. And then it says right here, replace the first column's title so that it reads time and years instead of trials. Then go through and replace each trial number with the time in geologic years. To do this, simply multiply the uh, trial number by your answer to number two up above, and then highlight your data table and insert it as a column, okay? So let me show you what I'm talking about to do here. So what you do is this. You come over here, so we got this guy, good. Put that down here. We're gonna go and highlight this again. But this time, we're gonna copy it. We're gonna paste it like over here. Boom. And instead of trial number, I'm going to put time in years. And then here, I'm going to multiply each one of these by my answer to the number two up here, which was five, four, seven, eight. All right. So I'm going to go through. I'm going to multiply it each time. So zero times five, uh, five four, seven, eight is zero. 1 times 5, 4, 7, 8 is 5, 4, 7, 8. And then 2. So uh, we go 2 times 5, 4, 7, 8. And we get 10,956. So I go 10,956. And then 3. I'm going to go 3 times 5, 4, oops, 3 times Five, four, seven, eight, and I get sixteen thousand four hundred and thirty-four years. All right, and then four half lives. So four times um, five, four, seven, eight equals twenty-one thousand nine hundred and twelve, and then five times. 5478 equals 27,390. And I just keep doing this by multiplying that number by my half life in years. And I'm getting how long of elapsed time it is for each one. So seven times 5478. And we get 38,346. And then eight times that, and we get four, three, eight, two, four. And then we go nine times, and we get finally 49,302. All right. So now this guy, I'm going to take, I'm going to highlight it, I'm going to insert a chart. All right. Now, this is what I need, but I need to change stuff, okay? So I'm going to go over here, and I'm going to go to Customize. So we click on Customize, and then we're going to go down to Grid Lines and Ticks. And we need to have more lines here in order to make it easier for us to do the next step. So I go down to Grid Lines and Ticks, first with the vertical axis. I'm going to go and set a step. I'm going to go to count. And instead of auto, 
I'm going to change that to 10. And then I'm going to go to count here for the minor spacing. I'm going to do that at 5. And then I'm going to make this a bigger chart to make it easier to read. All right. Then I'm going to click over here again on the chart editor. I'm going to go instead of vertical axis, we want to do the horizontal axis. And again, we do count and we do 10. And then for the minor, we're going to do count. We're going to do 10 on this one. So it gives us nice graphing. All right. Now, on this chart here, each little vertical line is going to represent two coins, all right? Each one represents two coins. And then on here, since it goes 10 count from here to here, each one of these is going to represent, uh, I believe, 50, no, excuse me, 100. Uh, let's see. <laughs> Let me make sure, 5,000 divided by 10. Uh, each one's going to represent 500, okay? Each line represents 500. So I'm going to take this guy, and I'm going to copy it, and I'm going to paste it into here. Boom. Oops. Sorry. I'm going to take this. Make sure I highlight it. Copy. And then paste it. Unlinked. Paste. All right, so here's my table. Now, the next step is, the whole point of this is that we want to use this graph that we now have and extrapolate and find out how long it is for there to be 12 coins remaining. Uh, in other words, about 12%. Remember, 12 out of 100 is 12%. And the way we do it is we go back here to this table. And it makes it easier if we just make it nice and big, as big as we can make it while still fitting in this window, okay? Then we want to go to 12. So that would be the first line up, all right? See if we can see it. I'm going to right, I'm gonna like, just make it bigger. We can get rid of the chart editor just to make it a little bit simpler for you guys to see. So we're going to go up here to the first line up after the 10. And then we're going to go over until we get to the line and it's about here all right and then we're going to follow it vertically down to here now that is the one two third line over from 1500 in this particular one so since the third line over each one of those we said was worth 500 so that's 16,500 would be this line in other words at 12, when it gets to about 12, it would be about 16,500 years ago. So that's what we do here. We go to here, and we answer 16,500 years. And we have to use this process for our abstract, okay? So when it comes, it's going to get that back down to normal size. So that's how long it is. Now that's going to be our claim for our abstract. And we then have to go and answer this question, how many years would it take, how many years old would a fossil be if it had about 12,000, excuse me, about 12% of its radioactive material remaining? Well, 12 out of 100 coins is 12%. And this is how many years it would be for our particular isotope that has this half-life, okay? But again, your data is going to be different. It all depends on your random shaking of the coins. And as long as your answer makes sense and it's based upon your data, any answer is good here. But you got to back it up with your evidence, which is your data here. Tell me what your data is and then explain how you got all the way from one to five, how you ended up getting this number, all right? And that's gonna be your abstract. If you, um, if you uh, have questions, 
uh, come to tutorial. I'd love to help you out. Otherwise, there you go. Good luck.